लोकसभा नमस्कार सब मुझे सुन पा रहे हैं जी सर जी जी थैंक यू थैंक यू और सर एक क्वेश्चन था ये इनरोलमेंट कोड लिखना है और अपना जो आरसी सेंटर है वो लिखना है या फिर लर्निंग सेंटर हाँ, लिखना है आर्स... वो एक ही बट कोड डाल दो या आरसी का पूरा नेम लिख दो आपके ऊपर अच्छा अच्छा थैंक यू सो मच जी सब अभिनंदन है प्लीज स्टार्ट जी थैंक यू तेजपाल जी रियली ग्रेटफुल एंड ऑब्लाइज एंड वेलकम डियर लर्नर्स टू दिस फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ इंट्रैक्शन ऑन द डिप्लोमा इन क्रिएटिव राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश ओ एल सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर एबल टू हेयर माय वॉइस इज एम माई ऑडिबल यस सर so oh, thank you thank you very much so uh once yes. again i extend very hearty welcome to this session as our learners know this uh, dce program diploma in creative writing in english jo hamara ek program hai ye khaas taur par uh, english mein jo creative writing hai jisko hum hindi mein srijanatmak lekhan kehte hain usko develop karne ke liye usko ek tarah se refine karne ke liye Uh, उसको एक फाइन uh, टच देने के लिए एक इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय विश्वविद्यालय इग्नो का एक इनिशिएटिव है uh, मुझे लगता है कि अगर मैं मिक्स्ड मोड रखूं तो ज़्यादा अच्छा है या प्योरली इंग्लिश में कुछ कंफर्म करेंगे हमारे स्टूडेंट्स वॉट इज कन्वीनियंट टू यू आई फील इफ इट इज इन इंग्लिश इट इज क्रिएटिव राइटिंग इंग्लिश uh what majority says that would be good uh, thank sure. you so much because we will also be discussing like uh, uh, indian writing in english so there will be uh, quite a few examples which we will take from uh, the uh, indian writings in english so uh, we'll see that uh, when we come to that point so very welcome once again to this uh, session DCE Diploma in Creative Writing in English, which is offered for uh, uh, developing uh, writing skill in English. As you know, the basic objective of the program. Uh, perhaps uh, you have already received your study material and gone through the program guide. Is it so? Have you consulted the program guide? Okay, so I'll continue. Not yet, and, sir. Yeah, maybe in a little Not while. Not yet. Oh, I see. So I would Because like. I'm living for it. Yeah. Diploma in Creative Writing in English is a 20 credits program, and uh, it has uh, five courses. I um, mean, in fact, it has seven uh, courses out of which you have to, uh, you know, uh, choose. There are two courses which are compulsory course DCE 01 and DCE 06. These are two compulsory courses, whereas from course number two, three, four, five, and Two, three, four, and five. You have to choose any three. So all together, there is a bouquet of uh, six uh, courses, which we usually call uh, papers in uh, common, you know, interaction, common understanding. But uh, here we will call them courses, and uh, uh, in, in the courses there will be a certain number of blocks, and each block will have certain number of units. so let me just clarify because we will using a little bit uh, complex terminology which uh, is very important as far as the distance education is concerned so we will have to first of all clarify these terms so uh, say for example you ask you, you ask somebody which course you have joined but uh, in our you know uh, terms the course is called the program so a dce diploma in creative writing in english is the program and uh, uh, when we say how many papers are there in your course so those papers are actually here called as courses so we have different courses as i just now mentioned there are six courses but uh, you have to choose uh, course number 1 and 6 are compulsory courses whereas 2 3 4 5 have option you can choose 
three courses of your choice. So put together, you have to uh, attempt 20 credits. Uh, and uh, credits means uh, roughly, I would just like to share with you. This credit scheme has a uh, it's a pedagogical specific approach because it deals with the, the inputs that you provide to study, to uh, comprehend, to attempt uh, the course contents which are uh, offered in a particular course. So roughly one, uh, cr one credit is worth 30 hours of study. So that means if you have one course, so that is uh, having four credits, so that means one course, in, in, in general sense, I would say, you can say that one paper is worth 120 study hours. Uh, because 30 into 4 is 120. So that means you have to spend 120 hours uh, studying, consulting, gathering information, discussing, and so forth. So roughly, if you have uh, five courses, you can see it is about uh, 600 uh, study hours of the program. So that much quantum, that much time you have to spend, but not necessarily that you just spend this time studying all the time, studying all the time. That means you can, you have the course contents which are provided as part of your uh, study material. Uh, the study materials offer in both modes, which is available in offline as well as online mode. You can download it, you can uh, refer to it uh, uh, online mode, and uh, maybe if it is possible, then it can be uh, obtained as a hard print also. So that is offline mode. But since you are students of online mode, and maybe I don't know, if some of you are also of the offline mode, so we will have a mixed. Uh, approach so that I uh, am able to reach both the modes and the offline mode as well as online mode because the course contents are same. Only the, uh, the the approach methodology is slightly different. So put together, there are uh, six courses of which you, there are five courses you have to choose. Whereas course number one and uh, six, which is uh, general principle of writings and the project work these are two compulsory courses which you have have to choose uh, whereas from courses two to five two three four five you have the option to choose any three so uh, as i mentioned to you that uh, the diploma program in creative writing in english bce which is the program board uh, is to develop uh, writing skills understanding of uh, the writings and uh, uh, to gain knowledge about the art of writing and uh, also to develop the creative ability you know of those uh, professional areas in which the uh, freelance writing is practiced so this curriculum is structured uh, you know, in a such a way that uh, it is uh, called slm self learning material so what is self-learning material or self-instructional material? The material is developed in such a way that uh, it is self-contained, self-sufficient, and also it is uh, in a way is a self-guiding material. So if uh, we talk about uh, the nature of the material, you will find it little peculiar. It is uh, writing style is different. It's a discussion forum is uh, slightly approached slightly differently and uh, always there is a feeling that uh, someone is along with you all through your study all through your uh, travel through the study material so that means uh, there is a strategy which is called ibt that is inbuilt tutor or inbuilt teacher so there's inbuilt teacher also so it is self-guiding self-contained self-sufficient uh, besides it is also self-evaluating so that means uh, during the course of uh, your uh, study, you will uh, come across certain areas where uh, you will find uh, sort of uh, notes like check your exercise, attempt these questions. And uh, there is a self check exercise, which means there is a exercise which allows you to evaluate or examine yourself, yourselves 
and at the same time there is a there is a portion which is the model answers or uh, you you are able to you know compare your answers with the model answers which are also in the in the study material so uh, i am uh, discussing this all with you because when you operate the study package of the self learning material uh, you should not get confused uh, you should not think that uh, oh how strange the study material is in fact the study material is called self instruction material or self learning material and the peculiarity of this self learning material is that it uh, allows you to study at your own place space and time because uh, if we talk about the Uh, learners of the distance education programs so we know that they are highly individual they may be employed they may not they will definitely be not visiting study centers or the regular classrooms so they are independent they are engaged they have prior knowledge so all these things are they are integrated uh, in the uh, structure of the program so that means you can bring in your own experiences you can con- contribute from your own uh, previous learning previous experience previous knowledge so it's a platform where you can bring in lot of your experiences into it and then synthesize it with your studies and whenever you attempt assignments or you write, when you will be writing determined examinations then you can integrate your own experiences in addition to what you study in the uh, course contents so this is uh, one aspect because i thought uh, it would be appropriate if i discuss the nature of the study material with you so i think briefly if we conclude this particular part of our discussion we come to an agreement that uh, we have a program which is a diploma in creative writing in english this is a program then it has certain number of courses which we usually call papers so as i mentioned to you there are six courses but you have the option to choose only five out of which course number 1 and course number 6 these two are compulsory courses where from 2 to 5 serial number you can choose any three so uh, this is the structure of the course as i mentioned to you it is put together it is 20 credits program and uh, the duration is one year so you will have to take the terminal examinations after one year but in between there is another component which has to be you know uh, fulfilled or attempted that is the assignments so assignments is the part of uh, our program and uh, please take note of it that assignment part is mandatory part it has to be you uh, know attempted and uh, you have to obtain a satisfactory score in it so uh, you have to take note of it that uh, terminal examination is one component assignment is another component and you have to obtain satisfactory or the pass score in both the components individually uh, uh, i would also like to tell you that uh, the assignment component is uh, known as uh, continuous monitoring of the learners so it is a, it is a mechanism developed to gauge whether you are uh, you know, comprehending the study material properly you are able to understand it you are able to integrate your prior learning with it or if there are any shortcomings then those are pointed out and uh, those are reflected in the feedback which is given on the assignments so there is a specific schedule for attempting the assignments which is already printed on your assignment booklet i am sure you have received the booklet or you can download it from the you know website directly you go to ignu.ac.in and then you go to students corner and then there is a download link and when you uh, go to that uh, download link then there is a list of programs and you can choose your program and accordingly you can download the assignments for the current year there might be assignments for the 2 3 years but you have to download the assignments for the year uh, for the current year when you are uh, you know 
submitting or in which particular year you are submitting the assignments. So this is a little bit about the assignments on the terminal examinations, the program, uh, its uh, credit load and uh, also the study hours and uh, choosing the uh, courses out of the given range. I would like to give you a very important piece of information with regard to the assignments and the terminal examination. You have to keep it in mind, as I mentioned just now, that uh, the assignments are compulsory component, but it's not only compulsory, you have to take note of it and uh, you have to remember it that uh, it is worth the 30% of weightage. Please uh, listen it carefully that the assignment component is compulsory and it carries 30% weightage. So that means your terminal examination which will be held at the end of the term is 70% weightage and 30% weightage is given to the assignments. So uh, my intention of uh, you know, emphasizing this particular point is that uh, you have to mandatorily attempt the assignments. You have to submit it uh, within the schedule, whatever is printed on the assignment booklet or maybe you can discuss it, uh, you know. So, uh, yeah, you, you got this point. So it's very good that uh, you uh, are already through the information portion. So uh, then we will move to the course structure of uh, the DCE, Diploma in Creative Writing in English. As I mentioned to you that uh, DCE uh, has, the program has 20 credits load and it is divided in six courses out of which you have to complete five courses worth, the, uh, worth 20 credits. As I mentioned to you that the course number one and six are compulsory. So I will read uh, the list of uh, courses so that we can understand what is there in the uh, courses, what are the nomenclature, what uh, we will be discussing there in the course of our discussion when we come to it. Uh, so DCE 1 is basically the general principles of writing. Uh, while uh, D DCE 2 is uh, the feature writing, uh, DCE 3 is uh, story writing or the story or short story. Then DCE 4 is writing for media. That means writing for radio and television. The course number five is uh, writing poetry and the course number six is the project. So out of these six courses one and six, these two are compulsory courses, you don't have a choice. But from feature writing, story, writing for media and writing poetry, you can choose any three. and. Uh, this way we will have the combination completed. So uh, that is about the uh, range of courses that is uh, provided in the Diploma in Creative Writing in English. Uh, dear learners, uh, as I mentioned you that uh, uh, you know the nomenclature of the, pro the whole process with a lot of technical terms. So I think you will have to be very clear about what is program, what are the courses, what are the blocks. As I mentioned to you that uh, there is a program which is DCE and within this there are a certain number of courses. Uh, you can also in a uh, common understanding you know, take it as papers and uh, within one particular uh, course there will be certain number of blocks. I would like to share with you that in this particular uh, program, uh, we have uh, four blocks in each course and each block uh, will be having at least four units. So the, uh, the, the lowest un the unit or the study section is unit 
and then it moves into making part of block and block makes part of the courses and courses put together are there in a particular program so we will be coming so can you please so can you please repeat once again if so please repeat once again because i missed one thing i don't know where i missed we we we, we have a, we have program which is dce then we have a certain number of courses within one particular program so in dce we are uh, having six courses but we have to choose only five uh, out of these six one and six these two courses are compulsory uh, we can choose from two to five that means two three four five we can choose on uh, any three so put together there are five courses each course will have four blocks right each course will have four blocks and each block will be having at least four units so units are small sections small you can say small titles of uh, study focusing on particular points which are uh, which which are uh, you know part of the block the, the block is also having certain title or nomenclature it will be dealing with the one particular section of the course so while studying uh, while discussing thoroughly we will come to perhaps a better understanding of this but if you just you know draw a small map there is a program under one program there will be certain number of courses each course will have certain number of blocks and each block will have certain number of units let me add here that in our case a uh, dce or diploma in creative writing in english is a program and it has uh, now we can come to our own uh, chosen area that we have to do five courses each course will have four blocks because that is the scheme uh, there uh, given in the dce uh, in certain other programs we have different uh, scheme where uh, there are three blocks or five blocks or eight blocks also but in dce strictly in each course there are four blocks and under each block there are four units let me just give you a rough idea that each course each course now i think you must be very clear each course will have 20 units roughly 16 or 20 units so it, it may range in between 16 and 20 but 16 units are compulsory there but maybe in one or two blocks there could be variation of one or two units but definitely there will be 16 units in one particular course that means in one paper you have to study 16 units at the minimum uh, so so we will uh, move ahead now from this particular uh, discussion uh, this was important because uh, during the course of our uh, discussion we may not uh, you know describe we will simply uh, you know talking like uh, yes this particular program or today we are discussing this particular blog or uh, and we are discussing this particular unit so at that point of time we uh, we have to be clear so this clarity was important i thought i should share it with you this is the basically we call it operating this material package so this was part of the study material package so as i mentioned to you that uh, our study material is called slm self learning material so self learning material has certain peculiarities as i have already mentioned to you so i will not go into those details so we will today uh, go to the first uh, course which is the general principle of writing But let me just uh, take a little more time that uh, the two courses which are compulsory uh, this one and six uh, course number six is a project work where you have to write certain 
creative uh, works and those have to be submitted for evaluation but before those are submitted for evaluation you have to put up a proposal proposal will be evaluated by the faculty at the headquarter at the respective school of studies and then you will have be having approval and eventually you will go on working on a project and then complete the project and submit it for evaluation so maybe when we come to course number 6 we will discuss it more uh, in detail so we now go to the course number 1 which is the dce program course number 1 dce 01 that is the general principles of writing so uh, the course is a compulsory course this uh, as i mentioned to you you have to take it it is not an optional course so uh, the general principles of writing this is the first course and it has four blocks as i mentioned to you and uh, uh, as per the schedule we will be taking up uh, one block in uh, each uh, counseling session so here also i would like to inform you that uh, we might not be able to discuss each and every part of the contents because uh, uh, we are not able to take up uh, Four units in de- in sort of uh, complete details, but we will focus on the major points which have been discussed in a particular block, because there are four blocks in one uh, course, and each block is having four units. So we will uh, be having a main section, then there are sub sections, the uh, which are the units. so uh, the four blocks which are uh, there in the general principles of writing are uh, the of dce1 uh, these are basically dealing with the uh, essentials of the art of creative writing that means uh, in the three blocks of the course one which is uh, dce01 which is entitled the general principles of writing the block one is the fundamental norms of writing block one is the fundamental norms of writing the course title is general principles of writing and the very first block of general principles in, in fact in the general principles of writing uh, in four, in total four blocks which are there in this particular course we'll discuss the essentials of the art of creative writing that means what goes into into the creative writing so we will have a lot of discussion a uh, lot of uh, areas are there what is creative writing what are the essentials that are mandatory for becoming a creative writer uh, how does one develop uh, a creative writing what are the gen- what is the genesis what are the factors which contribute uh, to the creative writing and uh, factors which uh, makes one the creative writer and uh, so this is uh, in the first three blocks in the four block uh, there will be a little familiarization with the uh, preparation of the manuscripts so the general uh, principles of writing will deal with the what is uh, creative writing how uh, what makes one a creative writer what are the essentials there to be becoming a creative writer uh, but uh, along with it uh, there is also uh, the block number 4 is particularly dedicated for uh, uh, publishing or preparing a manuscript for the publishing so that means there will be uh, what what is manuscript Uh, what is uh, how does final shape is given to the manuscript uh, uh, what what is the nature of the final manuscript which is given to the publisher so uh, in nutshell uh, the intent of uh, discussing with you is to that there will be some discussion on the copy editing uh, proofreading revision 
corrections, improvements, and uh, whatever goes into making writing published work that will be discussed in the block number four. So the first three blocks will deal with the essentials of creative writing. The block number four will be discussing the, uh, the procedure, the process of uh, preparing a copy for publisher or for publishing. So this is in the general principles of writing. So if we come to block one, as I mentioned to you, block one is the fundamental norms of writing. Uh, block two is the Again, as I mentioned to you, it is also related to the basic uh, essentials of writing, like uh, uh, what is uh, authenticity versus credibility, then what is uh, authorial wise and so forth. So we will discuss these when we come to different blocks. But let us focus on the block one of general principles of writing. As I mentioned to you, the first three blocks are focused on the essentials of creative writing. So block one is the foundation, foundational norms of writing. So what are the foundational norms of writing? These, what are the basic foundations? What are the norms of writing? What is writing? Uh, how does it happen? What goes into the writing and so forth? So we will be uh, uh, broadly discussing the uh, foundational norms, which are very basic requirements of writing, or uh, which are the very basic qualities of a writer, which makes one a writer. So the unit one, block one, unit one. Now I think the, the hierarchy is clear. We, the program is uh, DCE. The courses are DCE1, which is General Principles of Writing. Uh, within the course, as I mentioned, there are four blocks. Uh, the block number one is the foundational norms of writing. And within this particular block, there are four units, which we will discuss in this particular session. So the uh, unit one is the uh, writing, and the block title is the foundational norms of writing. So as I mentioned to you, conditional norms, I think uh, all of you are uh, seemingly well uh, acquainted with the uh, subject, with the area, uh, what is creative writing and uh, what are its uh, different uh, areas, and what are its implications, what goes into the uh, writing. So the very first unit is the, the title of the unit is writing. So the very first unit is the writing. So what is uh, writing? What do we call writing? What is the importance of the writing and so forth? So we will discuss that. Just let me give one second. Uh, another aspect uh, I would like to discuss with you is uh, uh, we call the study material, we could do not call it study material, I am using the term uh, perhaps a little illegally, the uh, correct term is SLM. The self-learning material that is provided to you is presented in a, in a typical uh, style to you. If you have gone through some of the blogs or if you have just personally uh, looked into the study material or uh, the uh, unit scheme, you would have found it, uh, it is slightly, you know, uh, typical. Typical in the sense that uh, uh, it, is, it is provided in a specific order. This is the structure of the unit. So if you look at the structure of the unit, uh, you will find uh, the structure has a hierarchical order. There is a uh, introduction, there are uh, main themes, 
there are sub themes uh, there are uh, then uh, there is a self check exercise then there is a uh, the model answers then there are references and there are a lot of other uh, like uh, terminology and uh, so forth so if you look at uh, the, the entire scheme then you find uh, that it is uh, it is provided in a typical uh, style so this is uh, this this has a meaning actually this is not without purpose the, the purpose is that uh, the material should be presented in such a manner that it should be self explanatory so uh, the very first uh, unit which is uh, there in the fundamental norms of writing in the block title is this unit number 1 is uh, the introduction the the uh, title of the chapter is or uh, the unit is itself the introduction uh, and introduction you will find in the structure also so there is a word structure so what is the structure of the unit structure of the unit is a typical scheme of uh, presenting the contents so if you look at the structure the structure uh, describes a uh, scheme of the contents the very first uh, uh, part of the structure and it is numbered in a specific way so it 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 has meaning actually if you look at the 10 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1 and then 141 1.2 that means the it is the unit number 1 of a particular block and uh, as you go to unit number 2 the scheme of uh, numbering will change it will be 2.0 if you go to unit number 3 the scheme will be unit number 3.0 like that it will go on increasing as the number of units progress so the very first uh, part of the structure is aims and objectives so uh, what you will uh, study in this particular unit is described in the part which is aims and objectives because uh, you study uh, the, the distance learner should not uh, be roaming in isolation uh, he or she must uh, have you know very clear idea what he or she is going to study in a particular unit so this uh, aims and objectives will describe why this unit is there why this discussion is there why this topic is there that will describe it and then you have introduction introduction will uh, even though the title of the unit is itself the introduction that means introduction of the writing uh, introduction here means writing what is writing what are the aims and objectives of writing what is writing then the birth of writing and its importance how does writing has evolved and then what is its importance and then uh, what are the various types of writing and what are their functions then there is the substance of writing what is the uh, what is there in the writing so you have uh, content you have form structure and style so these have been sub number so these are the sub themes of the main theme which is the substance of writing then we come to the next main sub theme which is the some tips to an aspiring writer who can be uh, called a writer who is in the in the in, who is in becoming of a writer what are his or her traits what are his or her characteristics so then there is a summing up small uh, uh, you know uh, summary of the discussion and then activities and aids to answers and then glossary so this is the scheme so this scheme is also very important and uh, this has been provided uh, uh, keeping in mind uh, yes so there is a hand raised would you like to pose a question okay so we will continue so if we look at the basic aims of uh, what are the aims and objectives so this is uh, 
normally uh, you know to uh, to describe uh, what the learner will be getting out of uh, you know when one study this particular unit so that means uh, uh, if you go through this unit uh, uh, you will be able to learn about uh, the uh, the writing what is writing what goes into making a person creative writer what are the various parts of uh, the creative writing and so forth so aims and objectives is basically uh, the strategy whereby the contents are built in such a fashion that uh, you have some idea as to after studying this unit uh, what is uh, what abilities what uh, addition to the information or knowledge will be there with the learner so then the next part is in production in we will not discuss all this in the subsequent discussion this uh, i am uh, specifically discussing with you the scheme of the unit or the structure of the unit because uh, you will find lot of uh, in every unit you will find uh, this particular structure part you will find introduction and then you will come to the main themes of the discussion or the discussion so are you able to uh, listen to me uh, am i audible yeah now so you are audible but for a fraction of second it uh, i mean audio was lost absolutely the screen was still yeah actually uh, someone was calling me so i did ignore it so that is how i didn't uh, okay fine get my voice so introduction is uh, usually is is generally uh, linkage uh i would uh, like to tell you that uh, the whole scheme is to give is to create a kind of uh, face to face environment because uh, when the teacher goes into classroom then the teacher say yes yesterday we studied this thing or a few days ago we discussed this particular chapter we had this much of discussion and so forth so today we will discuss this and then i hope then we are we will be able to understand this so it's a kind of uh, ambiance of a, a classroom situation because as i mentioned to you that uh, the self learning material is self contained self sufficient self guiding uh, self directional self examining self evaluating uh, so these are uh, peculiarities of the study material that is provided to the learners so this is part of that scheme so that is how we have aims and objectives then we have the introduction what is the introduction so now come let us come to our point which is the what is the writing so it is the introduction to writing primarily it is an introductory unit to what is writing so all of us uh, know that uh, we are uh, human beings uh, and uh, we have a innate tendency to share our experiences to express ourselves so there are a lot of uh, ways and means to express uh, you know ourselves so that means uh, we need some means some ways we have uh, languages then we have Uh, certain other means where we didn't have languages then we had inscription on the stones and so forth so a lot of uh, such uh, means and ways are there in the different societies each society will have its own kind to express to communicate to the other members of the society or to interact between societies and so forth so there is a long history 
this and uh, there are different patterns so uh, eventually a man came to a kind of uh, phase where he or she started you know making faces uh, raising hands indicating a lot of uh, means were there so writing is also uh, one part of that process so it came a bit late but uh, it was part of that uh, ex- that the zeal that innate desire to express so introduction part is basically to go into slight um, background of the topic and then to link it with the with the topic that uh, there is in the uh, hands for discussion so uh, we know that uh, one of the numerous patterns to express the human kind had certain point of times writing is one such means uh, we know that writing has revolutionized the, the societal behavior uh, because uh, all other means were limited they they were restricted they didn't have the continuity and so forth but when the writing came uh, progressed developed we know that we have a history we know that we have uh, uh, continuity we have uh, them preserved then a lot of information was stored and uh, we are able to continue with uh, this uh, information with this knowledge and we look forward to preserve it for the future generations so uh, if we conclude it we can say that uh, writing is something that gives uh, that uh, stability to the thought process and uh, it is uh, a means which uh, allows the human kind to uh, preserve its ideas notions uh, achievements uh, for the future generation so writing is a tool or uh, an important mechanism which links the present with the past with the future so we know that uh, if there are gestures and postures it is not possible to preserve them to continue with them they are there momentarily and changes very rapidly uh, as we move on with different societies move on with the pace of time uh, and uh, interactions so all these are uh, gesture postures uh, oral uh, narrations or orations these are specific to the uh, to a particular group of uh, people or maybe a small section of people or maybe a small fraction of society but when we have society uh, Uh, kind of entity which is uh, society then there are certain features of the society there are certain characteristics and one of those important characteristics that a society must have or a society is usually having that is it has its own writing process or writing stream that means it has its own script so uh, moving ahead uh, we know that uh, uh, this is a very long history of uh, developing writings it is not uh, maybe uh, fitness of the thing to go into all those details but uh, we know that uh, we have mesopotamia civilizations we have mohenjo-daro harappa Uh, and there are certain traces which uh, there are certain uh, symbols there are certain uh, inscriptions um, and sort of all those all such traces are there so these are there uh, the basic question is uh, that uh, why uh, all these happened why this was not with the the, the other uh, uh, other uh, section of the 
animals only why it is with the human beings so there are two three basic questions because human beings have innate feelings innate uh, ability uh, and innate desire they have uh, desire innate desire to share with others what to share with others they have certain emotions they have certain feelings and uh, then how do they develop writing skill they have habit of uh, you know scribbling things they have habit of expressing themselves as i mentioned to you initially through gen- gestures and postures then uh, orations and eventually they started you know to uh, to to put uh, their views to maybe Uh, in moments of uh, aggression in moments of peace and happiness they are, they, they express themselves differently so eventually uh, all this uh, gave way to creating a system of writing perhaps it, it was not as developed as we see today the system of writing because uh, there a lot of science and lot of thinking has gone into it but historically if we see uh, this these were the causes so because it was the innate desire of human kind to uh, to express so uh, which gave birth to the art of writing or the notion of writing so uh, as i mentioned to you uh, what are the functions of writing what are what are the functions of writing the basic functions of uh, writing uh, uh, are this are primarily you know two one is to pass on the information another function of the writing or maybe eventually will become genre of writing or we call it types of writing uh, as i mentioned that uh, usually Uh, we have creative writing and non creative writing but what is the difference between the two if we if we take them as uh, types of writing then uh, these two types of writings have very specific objectives if we call the uh, writing as creative writing that means it has a basic human cravings to express oneself that means it is primarily dominated with feelings emotions desire to share and exchange but if we go into the other type of uh, writing which is the non creative writing that is majorly to to inform to uh, to pass on the knowledge and at times maybe to entertain but if one expresses say for example we are talking about the creative writing or uh, fiction or poetry or for any other kind of uh, creative writing you know that uh, poetry is for uh, is self of the poet it is the poet's own will and wits that he or she writes the poetry one doesn't write poetry to inform or to pass on knowledge or to pass on information or to share a piece of knowledge so uh, these are the major two categories of uh, writing and their functions are accordingly uh, also different function of the creative writing is to express oneself that means it is function it is the, it is the expression of feelings emotions largely but if uh, you use the writings to uh, just inform somebody so that is the non creative function of the writing so uh, we know that uh, uh, we we use writing for lot of other purposes also which are uh, there to 
inform, to entertain, to reveal, to read. We say, uh, we use the jargon, reading between the lines. That is one point where uh, the intentions, where the uh, encoding of the uh, writing is very, very deeply associated with the person who has evolved that particular piece of writing. So that is one best example of the creative writing. But if one goes into making writing very explicit, very clear, uh, objective, and also for the instant niche use and uh, need, say for example, somebody would like to inform us, yes, this is this, uh, there might be some purpose which is to be fulfilled. So that part is the non-creative writing. Uh, but I do not, it is very difficult to you know, draw a line between the two. There is uh, quite a bit of uh, common features between the two, but creative writing is primarily that expresses the feelings, emotions. Non-creative writing is the, that one which, uh, which has the piece of information. So let us call that uh, both have ideas. But uh, ideas uh, in the creative writing, those are ideas loaded with feelings, loaded with emotions. Uh, and uh, when the ideas have larger part of the uh, knowledge and information, then perhaps it would form the non-creative uh, part or the, the, the function would be to inform and to reveal the uh, piece of information or to pass on the piece of knowledge. So this, this, this is a uh, cursory understanding. We will uh, come to uh, detailed understanding. Uh, then there is a small question, you know, uh, what is spiritual, uh, spiritual writing, whether it is creative or it is non-creative. So this uh, is, is very difficult to, you know, uh, draw a very strict line because the thought process continues to be there as the thought process is thought process continues uh, there is uh, in the spirituality there is a love of divinity uh, and uh, there are moments of uh, deep serene feelings uh, those are reflected in the writing so what should we call it but at the same time uh, if you are passing that information that uh, you want to share that moment so that sometimes becomes a kind of information. So it is very difficult, but largely the ideas which are dominated by the uh, emotions, by the feelings, uh, we are all are aware of the romantic poetry, of the romanticism in poetry. When we are nostalgic, we are talking about the past experiences. Uh, we, we are talking about the uh, people whom we have separated long ago. So that longing is there in the poetry. Uh, so that is uh, usually part of the creative poetry. Uh, uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, uh, when we ta talk about the types and the functions, functions uh, I have just now uh, shared with you that the functions of the writing is primarily uh, if it is creative writing, it is to share the uh, feelings and emotions, uh, the ideas. Uh, and when you specifically use the writing for information, writing for knowledge, writing for revelations, uh, perhaps then it forms the part of non-creative writing. So, very important uh, point to be discussed here is, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, more important, that is, uh, what are the, what is the you know substance of writing? Uh, what what is the essentials of writing? What goes into that makes the writing? Because we are uh, discussing the creative writing today. Uh, for the first time in this particular session. 
so we have to uh, uh, go through this part as well uh, we know that uh, uh, we always discuss that there is a subject in the writing so what do we mean by subject what is subject in writing uh, so we call it content the what is the content what is the essence of content how do we say that this is the content if we read poetry uh, we find pleasure in it we are overwhelmed with it so that overwhelming that pleasure is something which is type of content which is so uh, it is defined that the essence of the content is the experience whatever experience you draw from reading uh, creative writing whether it is poetry whether it is a poem or whether it is uh, fiction that experience is the content so that is uh, that's a kind of observation because you read it you observe maybe within yourself and then you have that specific experience so this experience is the content to where does it come from what uh, when a reader reads some writing so then where that feeling comes that comes from the writing so we often say a well written work should always give the reader the feeling that it is real a well a well written work should always give the reader the feeling that it is real now here is a point a well written work what is the well written work that means well, well presented contents so that means you draw experience from reading which has content so if i use the word uh, of hindi we have a vishay vastu we have something if we talk about nature when we read about nature when we understand the nature and we draw certain kind of pleasure from that reading but then nature is there so we draw pleasure from reading about nature or reading about love reading about other experiences so that experience which we draw from reading something that something something is content maybe it is it is it is uh, separation or it is uh, union or it is nature or any other uh, quote and quote subject matter so the content is subject matter which is written or very well written as a work then it gives the readers a feeling and what type of feeling that it is real it is not fiction so we distinguish between fiction and the real so uh, in fiction we know that it is fiction but then there is also a subject matter content so that is the content so basically what is the what uh, what is the nature of the content nature of the content is something that looks like that is related to life that is related to because uh, after all uh, 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 what is observed in writing some facet of life it is uh, one's behavior one's nature one's mood one's feelings one's emotions whatever is there whether it is creative writing or non creative writing something is there which is described in the words 
and then from that words the reader draws experiences and then tries to relate it to life that would mean the good writing is supposed to be real so uh, one looks one creates images from that experience which one uh, from which, which one uh, finds when one reads something so what what is something which is very well written piece or work so i think that is the content content is primarily uh, an experience that experience is drawn from the reading and that reading is built upon something something which is basically subject content that is to be that should be real that should relate to the life so that is the content the second important substance of writing is the form uh form we all know that uh, there are different forms of uh, writing and uh, the uh, different peoples have adopted different uh, they are known by their writings because uh, how they are distinguished they are distinguished by the contents by the subject matter that they have taken for writing but at the same time if you look at the look at any literary piece of okay, uh, literary piece or literary work then you also distinguish between the creators between the authors by the form that they have adopted so the contents and the form is generally according to the nature of the contents so some people also say that uh, content itself content itself generally decides as to what form it should take as to what form it should take uh, we know that uh, poems or a poetry there are certain themes there are certain contents which uh, itself expresses the or makes clear to the author or the poet that it should be written in a poetic style in uh, in rhythm in plain in free verse or in what style or it should be written in prose if it is a long event of uh, a long story of events it goes into fiction or maybe other kind of writings but if it is deep feelings it is something that is very intimately uh, nostalgic very intimate very emotional then there is a different form which is adopted by the creator so we know basically form is the uh, it is a primarily uh, two types one is literary form and another one is the structural form so the literary form is uh, one which decides the uh, form on the basis of the contents structural form is that is uh, upon the creator or the author or the writer say for example if it is a fiction then the author decides how to begin how to develop how to conclude how to end so maybe uh, later on we will discuss it more uh, clearly or in detail the third uh, part is the structure so structure is a very important part of any writing uh, if it is not structured i think it is very difficult to comprehend a writer or to draw experience so it is very important that it should be structure structure means it has to progress in a systematic way sometimes we call it should be logical uh but uh, 
certain other uh, conclusions may be drawn from this statement. So sometimes it is very difficult to create a logical structure for uh, creative writing. Though yes, it is possible if you have uh, prose, if you have fiction, or if you have essays, or other kinds of writings. But uh, again, uh, we have to agree that even in the poetic works, there is a structural approach. The poet conceives something, reveals it, hides it, heightens it, uses uh, rhythmic devices, and then, you know, bring to the climax culmination. So, structure is very important because it helps the reader to put uh, into the experiences of the writing or uh, takes the readers to a domain where uh, sharing of experiences takes place. The reader is able to share, is to approach the author and thereby, you know, draw the experiences. So, we can say that uh, the structure is uh, uh, primarily it looks little odd to the creative work, but if it is not there, then it is very difficult to grasp, to, to comprehend the completeness of the work. So I think we have to we, we have to uh, agree that if there is uh, 500 pages or 700 pages novel. And if it is absurdly written, if uh, there is no uh, proper development, proper uh, beginning of the work, and if there is no proper development, or there is no conclusion, or there is no climax, it is very difficult to, you know, to draw the uh, literary achievements, that means the pleasure, the experience from that reading. So structure is very important. So uh, structure is basically uh, an easy uh, a tool for easy communication uh, for uh, comprehension of the literary piece or literary work. So it makes the reader's job slightly easier and also it helps the author or the writer or the poet to present the contents in let me use the word logical in some sense uh, it is logical presentation which helps the reader to properly comprehend the contents which are presented in the work. Uh, the fourth important uh, uh, issue that is the style. Uh, what is the style? You see, uh, the style is uh, something how you shape the things, uh, how uh, you uh, you interwove the events, because uh, there is a possibility that even the very deep feelings are presented in a gross way or very. Uh, the author is very matured one, then even the gloss things can be presented in a very, very defined and subtle way. So these, uh, these are very important uh, strategies. Like we say sometimes, the word delay. Sometimes we use the simple words to describe the complex or the, the complex uh, uh, ideas, feelings, and sometimes for simpler uh, uh, expressions, we use very complex words. So, if it is uh, poetry, then perhaps all of us have noted that uh, the style of the poet is very, very soft, very, very subtle approaching the mind, hearts, touching the hearts of the readers. That is the style. 
but if it is not so then we say no it is not a good writing it is not it is a bad writing uh, so when you describe the chain of events uh, in a normal style even in poetry it becomes little difficult and seems little gross but if the chain of events if the feelings which are overwhelmingly flowing if those are described in a very soft you will come to the rhythmic arrangements of the poetry then we will find that uh, this particular aspect becomes very important style so these uh, were the few issues which were there in the first uh, unit which was the introduction the substance of writing so content form structure style and uh, so these were the uh, essentials or the essence uh, then this uh, very first unit also discusses certain other points uh, which are the some tips to an aspiring writer because we are uh, today just opening up the discussion so it is a little too early to go into the details uh, so here uh, we are discussing the issues or the subject matter which is provided in your self learning material also gives a kind of introductory uh, introductory approach it, it, it just lays down the path so it says that uh, what should be done for writing what should be done for the writing i belong primarily to the media so a lot of people ask me a question how should we become broadcaster how do we become media person or the broadcasters so i use the term you listen you listen and listen so they say no we listen so i use the metaphor which is the which is in hindi i say you will become broadcaster you will become good radio person if sunne se if you listen सुनने से सो दिस नो वी वी ऑलवेज सुन सुनते हैं हम सब सुनते हैं सो आई सेड नो सुनते नहीं हैं सुनते हैं सो सेम गोज विद दी अस्पायरिंग राइटर हु इज हु इज एन अस्पायरिंग राइटर अस्पायरिंग राइटर इज वन हु रीड्स दैट्स वट आई एम सेन हु रीड्स वन हैज टू बी वरिशियस रीडर if one would like to become a writer this is very important the more we read the better ideas the better structure uh, the better expression uh, we have uh, uh, corpus of words we have our vocabulary enriches so the very first uh, condition of a good or a writer in the becoming is that uh, one should read a lot because if one reads then one becomes informed if one is informed one is inspired and then one is able to express but one has to be a voracious reader the second uh, very important tip is the uh, is, is to uh, is to give some time you see uh, if one reads and start writing that is not possible uh, one has to allow the experiences to ripen that means uh, one should uh, share the experiences that are uh, drawn from the writing uh, from the readings uh, those should be discussed first of all those should be internalized internalization of reading what is the internalization of reading that is the deep understanding of the experiences that one draws from the writer and then perhaps when one internalizes then a bunch of experiences remains a small amount of experiences those are Uh, largely the gross experiences merges into the deeper experiences 
and then very few uh, remains then those can be you know complemented with the individuals experiences that one draws from the world or the uh, overall uh, social or uh, the life behavior so one must allow the experiences to ripen that means ripening is here to internalize and then add some more experiences from the outer world to mingle with the internalized experiences and then uh, come to express them uh, a very important very simple uh, term is uh, write differently but this is there is a great danger in it right differently means uh, uh, one should not copy one should not one should try to write so uh, but uh, at the same time if one takes uh, if one just thinks to revolutionize the writing overnight and become famous like any stalwart that is not possible therefore it is very important that uh, one must write differently because that is what will eventually make one a good writer uh, with the uh, individual identity but it needs lot of time patience and as i mentioned uh, internalization of experiences and also adding the world view to the experiences sharing with others specifically listening to the great writers reading their works uh, listening to people with experience and then perhaps one can develop the distinct style distinct uh, narratives to you know relate uh, to express the feelings or to uh, write different a uh, very simple uh, mechanism a very simple uh, tool to develop writing habit is to start with your diary this is one very simple exercise and if one uh, starts writing diary then uh, one is able to uh, record every day's experiences uh, whatever reading we do the, those experiences can also be recorded and eventually uh, when one continues to write so uh, uh, day by day the refinement comes into it and sometimes very interesting and quotes gets recorded and maybe at certain point of time when one feels that yes i can write i can at least i can begin writing then all this diary notings all these scribblings becomes very important because they takes one into the memory lanes uh, and then one is able to express or to narrate them perhaps uh, in one's own individual style uh, maybe in more refined manner so uh, briefly to conclude this particular unit is to is that uh, writing is not a short journey it takes uh, very long to uh, to become a writer or if i may say perhaps it will not be too uh, wrong to say that uh, even to begin writing will take some time some patience some hard work so uh, one should perhaps not jump upon writing uh, from the day one uh, there might have been certain cases where uh, certain uh, we will come to cliches we will come to the complex writings we will come to uh, the uh, ambiguities which we try to you know put into writing but uh, those are not the uh, strategies those are not uh, the approaches which should be adopted by the writers in the making means those who would like to become writers they should avoid these things slang we should not use 
jargon, the language which is which is having a lot of cliches, pre and post interpretations. Such words should not be used. So, uh, primarily uh, hard work, patience, a lot of reading, internalization of uh, the experience drawn from the detailed discussion. All this goes into making a good, a good writer or a person who is in the process of going to be a writer or author. So this was the unit one. Uh, we will uh, have a small discussion on unit two also, and then, if possible, we will discuss maybe to, uh, five to ten minutes. If you have any query about uh, the uh, discussion today or about uh, the program, or different courses, or the structure of the program, so. The unit two is how to achieve lucidity and directness. <clears throat> this is a little uh, typical directness and lucidity. So, but it is not very complex. Uh, we all know that uh, if one has decided to become a writer, then one has to know how to approach the reader. How to become? Uh, how, how to become uh, uh, expressive? How to take the ideas directly to the reader? So uh, it's a, it's a matter of primarily the the directness and lucidity are both concerned with clarity. So if I say, if, if I speak something and if it reaches the reader, if I write something which re reaches the reader uh, without much effort, that means it has directness. But what uh, brings directness into the writing, that is the lucidity. What is lucidity? This is the clarity of thoughts. We discussed structure, we discussed the contents, we discussed the style, we discussed the form in the previous unit. Then we discussed what goes into making a writer, what are the essence of the writing and then the, what, are the, uh, what are the prerequisites of becoming a writer. If we look at those and keep them on one side and take the reader's view, what reader expects? The reader expects that uh, whatever the author is willing to say is so expressed, so uh, written that it reaches the reader without much effort. So we have always said that uh, good writing is that what reads. A good writing reads or a good writing is that what reads. So we have to define the word reads. So the, uh, that what reads is means the content has clarity. So if one is able to uh, reach the readers without much effort, then uh, there is uh, one can say there is clarity. So what is clarity? This is interesting. What is clarity? What are the dimensions of clarity? How do we define clarity? The word is clear. So then if the word is clear, that means there is clarity. So clarity is something when it is very clear with the author as to what he or she wants to make clear whether it is emotions her own emotions his own feelings whether it is world view that means whether it is a piece of knowledge whether it's piece of information if the author is clear within herself or himself then there will be clarity in the writing. 
there won't be any problem to understand that kind of writing. So that means the author has to decide beforehand as to what he or she wants to make clear. If that, that means what, what is that, means what concept is to be made clear, if it is clear with the author, then there is a possibility or there is a, a quality of clarity. The second point, uh, which is very important, how does clarity develop? What is the mechanism to develop clarity? You see, clarity comes with a uh, lot of uh, experience, with a lot of uh, study, with a uh, lot of uh, education. Education alone will not make a good uh, author, but of course, it is one of those essential conditions that if one is well read, it is likely that he or she might have the clarity of thoughts. So when we call clarity of thoughts, that means there is well, uh, there is a good foundation of education behind that thought and there will be clarity when the, uh, when the knowledge gained. Say for example, uh, someone would like to write about nature. You see, we all talk about nature, but one must understand the moods of nature, the shades of nature, the intricacies of nature. And all this will come with uh, broad reading. But at the same time, one must also study, educate oneself in the domain in which he or she is trying to enter for writing. Uh, say, for example, if someone is trying to write upon the judiciary uh, or the constitution of India or the history of India or the psychology, or say, for example, the history of uh, literature, how would one write clearly or how clarity will be there in the writings until and unless one has written, one has uh, studied about the, uh, not only Indian history, but uh, the world history, history of the different nations and then history of our own country or the Indian continent and then Indian history. Then there will be parallels there will be comparisons, there will be contrasts. All this require deep knowledge which comes with the education. Second part, uh, as I mentioned, first is to, uh, to be very clear about the subject or the content uh, upon which one would like to write. Second one is the education, as I mentioned, if uh, there is a lack of education, that means uh, there, will, there won't be a complete understanding of the topic and it's not possible to bring about clarity uh, in one's writing. Uh, the third important aspect is there has to be you know, a concrete definition of the subject. The, the writer must have clarity about the, the, the topic which he or she is likely to write. Uh, there, because there are certain notions, if say for example one is writing about uh, some topic on geography, there is any number of technical terms, there are any number of conceptual terms which have long definitions, long understanding. So if one is not able to define uh, if one is not able to uh, clearly put the uh, kind of nomenclature before oneself, then there won't be complete understanding of the content or the topic and thereby uh, as a result uh, it will not be possible to bring about clarity.
certain features of uh, writing or rather if one ask somebody what is good writing or what, uh, what are the features of good writing maybe all of us have that yes it should give pleasure it should uh, give good information all these are fine i use the word that uh, good writing is that what reads so that the very first quality of uh, good writing uh, we are discussing uh, the clarity of course there has to be clarity along with the clarity there has to be transparency also uh, we all know that uh, good writings have this very uh, deep or major element of transparency if you look into the writings you should be able to see through it that means if one is writing about personal experiences then one should be able to see through the persona of that person that means things should not be poked up so that they look fishy artificial and created so it has to be not only clear or clarity has to be there but it, transparency is also another feature of the good writing but this is not enough uh, we have seen that uh, mulk raj anand when he writes we can also we, we can always assume we can always we, we feel the, always moving with the person when we read uh, poet, word verse poetry we feel we are part of the nature we are moving into the laps of nature we are there in the highlands we are there in the jeep uh, the valleys and we feel we are with the nature and we do not have any haze we do not have any uh, certain barriers in our range of imagination what what is more important than clarity and transparency in a good writing is that it should have it should be engaging what is engaging engaging is that it must be engaging engaging means that the reader should be able to integrate himself or herself with the writing with the should be able to travel along with the author or the writer or the poet or the fiction creator that means the imagination of the reader should find some lead and then that lead would be there only when it is written on the basis of deep understanding of the subject matter and having clarity and transparency in it so this is very important uh, another uh, another issue which is uh, i always feel that this is very important we try to uh, say uh, no my experiences are uh, not only better but they are real but uh, we use the term internalization internalization of reading when we internalize reading we uh, within our own selves we try to you know Uh, post mortem it we try to uh, see what is uh, reality what is non real and within that if we are able to understand what is real then we will be able to engage the reader through our writings but if one says no my experiences are real my experiences are better it is very difficult that the rigidity will allow clarity to be in the writings 
so rigidity is very very negative point in a good writing that would means that uh, while every writer has very distinct feelings emotions writings contents yet one is very cleverly able to engage the reader but if one is not able to engage the reader and uh, uh, thinking that the experiences of the authors are the final there is no scope for intermingling or internalization of the uh, ideas thoughts within the hearts of the reader it is very difficult that uh, the uh, clarity will be there in the writings so uh, if one has to uh, remember that if there is a rigidity in the writing that means the assumption that means the writer's own hegemony of thoughts so that should not be allowed to dominate the writings because you might have seen there are certain types of writings which we call prescriptive writings and we often avoid such writings when one becomes prescriptive so what is pres- being prescriptive that means then there seems to be a sense of rigidity uh, then there seems to be a sense of disallowing the world view of the common readers to come and uh, you know intermingle with the experiences of the author so then uh, that question of rigidity arises so perhaps the very fine uh, writings which have uh, uh, evolved which have really uh, found a large readership are always uh, such writings which allows the right the readers to share the experiences to become one with the feelings experiences with the deep understanding with the refined ideas of the author so uh, another point is uh, there that the clarity is not something which is through a fake comprehensibility we are all uh, already uh, discussing that transparency is must so transparency will allow uh, the reader to join the domain of experience with the writer but if it there is a uh, there is a kind of fake comprehensibility if it is not the reader is not able to fully comprehend the uh, contents then uh, i think that would also be one point Uh, which will uh, hamper uh, the process of uh, once becoming a good author uh, yes uh, if we look at the great poets uh, great english poets and the james uh, uh, ral and osman uh, many other like isabella archer and very seasoned uh, authors or the writers poets there is one very important thing clarity is not something which is just simplicity of statement within a very complex statement also the simplicity the the the, the clarity can be achieved so uh, perhaps uh, for the sake of simplicity for the sake of uh, becoming more and more plain uh we cannot dilute the the linguistic uh, traits of a particular style or particular expression so we have to remember that uh, clarity uh, doesn't mean that your language should be very simple but yes simple in terms of refined in terms of uh, respectful in terms of Uh, the literary richness it will definitely uh, complex statement can also be having a clarity but uh, it should not be that we sacrificed for the sake of simplicity so i think that has to be
so we know that uh, many beautiful things many beautiful creations have been there which uh, seems to be complex yet they are very beautiful to read and uh, they render their essence very appropriately so that means there are writings which are very mature writings they are slightly difficult uh, they need a bit more understanding but ultimately they really overwhelm the readers so that means uh, that means uh, seasoned writing uh, mature writing uh, perhaps may not be easily comprehensible but the it has a very great level of clarity and it renders its meaning its understanding very appropriately to the readers and finally one important point uh, is uh, there that, uh, we have to keep our reader reader in mind whom we are writing this is one such question which is uh, always uh, there in the, any kind of writing uh, we know that uh, if we do not keep the reader in mind uh, i think we do fail in uh, uh, in selection of proper theme proper style proper form Uh, and also uh, we fail to bring about clarity uh, reason being that if our target is not uh, within our view then we who for whom we are writing so we must have uh, our target we must have the reader in view so reader in view means for whom we are writing if it is writing for children if it is writing for uh, the uh, scientific community if it is writing for media if it is writing for uh, the literature or the li- if it is literary writing uh, the reader is always different of course a uh, scientist may be a good uh, lover of uh, poetry but when we are uh, doing scientific writing we are writing for science we are writing for children we are writing for uh, someone else then uh, it is very difficult we will not be able to achieve a right kind of approach right kind of, uh, despite having good things uh, the strategy will not work so i think uh, some of our learner is uh, saying that uh, we must conclude this session so we are uh, almost uh, nearing 1 pm uh, we have few more uh, issues to discuss but we can discuss them in the coming sessions i would uh, say that uh, in the 2 3 minutes we can uh, discuss if there are certain issues certain points or uh, uh, all of you have clarity then uh, maybe we can wind up the session but i would like to have maybe couple of minutes for the interaction on the today's discussion so now you are open for the discussion any question हेलो यस यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून इट्स सो इट वाज सच अ वंडरफुल सेशन आई वाज डेस्परेटली वेटिंग फॉर दिस दिस सेशन व्हिच इज प्रोवाइडेड फ्रॉम मिग्नो सो माय क्वेश्चन इज क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस टुडेस सेशन सो बेसिकली द आई हैव एनरोल्ड माय सेल्फ फॉर दिस एमबीए प्रोग्राम इन जुलाई 22 राइट सो maybe it is uh, out of the box but as of now na we haven't uh, you know even uh, single semester where our term and examination was held so is there any uh, could you please able to uh, clarify this when will when it will happen or kind of uh, i welcome your question and uh, we have colleague from the regional center recording the proceedings 
uh, and uh, if uh, you come to the next session uh, definitely they will answer it because uh, uh, this part is handled by the colleagues from the regional center and somebody is definitely listening to what you said and um, uh, maybe if they are able to address it right away so i would request them to come with the right piece of information uh, or uh, maybe uh, in the next session uh, definitely your uh, query will be answered uh, thank you so much sir because uh, that part is slightly with the other colleagues uh, those who are from the regional center so i should not uh, intercede into that but definitely i will request them to take your question and then answer it please. sure sure thank wonderful you. thank you yeah good afternoon sir yes can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. um yes yeah, sir uh, i would like to get something very clear how do we differentiate between clarity and transparency yeah yeah you see uh, uh, clarity is as i mentioned uh, that uh, clarity is something when you have uh, uh, deeply thought over what you want to clear what you want to clear what means something that you have in your mind if that that which you want to clear is clear in your mind then the clarity will come so that is something that is something which is uh, always with the respective author because you never know uh, about what one is talking if one is talking about nature there are hundreds of shades of nature so what one would like to make clear should be clear within the mind of the author that is one second part is you ask transparency transparency is primarily when the writing is uh, presented to the reader the reader should be able to see through it i use the word good writing is that what reads so what reads means uh, uh, most often you uh, might have also realized those which are very good uh, readings very good writings we all they always flow and we we read them and along with that we keep on flowing we we, we find ourselves sort of swayed away with the experiences that are there in the moment in the writings so transparency is primarily honesty transparency is honesty mm -hmm. and clarity about what one would like to make uh, what one would intending to make clear so that what is the question so that question is a respective question with each and every author what one would like to write upon primarily this is what your subject matter rather if we grossly interpret it one should be very clear about the theme about the subject about the matter upon which one would like to write and the writing Uh, has to be of course very clear but transparency is honesty basically it is honesty that means if the writer is honestly sharing uh, his or her own ideas not uh, overloading it with too many of uh, the fake experiences fake narratives fake uh, fakeness should not be there in the uh, description of uh, the subject matter so one is related to the clarity about topic another is related to the honesty of the expressions or the writings or the explanation okay. uh, so friends with it uh, i think we have come to the closeness of the uh, session so uh, tomorrow we will uh, take up uh, the next unit and uh, then we will discuss certain other points there there were few more points in it like uh, uh, linguistic uh, proficiency and so forth so, but of course we will discuss them also uh, tomorrow we will discuss uh, another topic which is uh, authenticity versus credibility so we will continue with it as the question uh, just now i mean some one up a small question about the clarity and transparency 
so it will build on the authenticity and credibility what is credible and what is authentic and what is the relationship between the two so, is there is there anything we can uh, study or read based on your uh, today's lecture is there anything else we can do uh yes because uh, i have not received any study material hard copy yet but uh, i think if you refer to the uh, soft copy which is always available on the internet you okay, you, uh, you you visit egyankosh.com okay you visit egyankosh and there you will find the material okay sir. Okay. Because uh, this uh, discussion is based on lot of uh, material uh, consulted, and then ultimately, you know, like uh, uh, common features have brought into the material. So uh, you visit uh, eGyan Kosh. Okay, sir. And is uh, can we uh, can we get the recordings of uh, these sessions uh, for us to revise or? Uh... Yeah, I will request uh, the our uh, uh, region center uh, colleagues are there. Uh, so maybe we will uh, remind uh, request them tomorrow or day after, and they uh, are recording the session. So probably they will have it, but we will have to find it out. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Because we uh, the mails I I can we can only send the mails. Otherwise, we do not have any other contact details. So if possible. Uh, Please see if uh, yeah. please see if this can be done. Or not. We'll put your request through. No, no issue. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, all and uh, colleagues from RC also for facilitating the sessions and uh, for your rapt attention. Uh, I am indeed grateful, and I hope uh, we could uh, do some justice with uh, these two hours. So we look forward uh, to tomorrow's discussion. and with that i wish you a very good day see you tomorrow thank you so much and same to you sir okay well well thank you